All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 118 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Einie. Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right, Jack Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. If my calculations are correct, when this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Watch this, watch this! <laughs> what did I tell you? 88 miles per hour! The temporal displacement occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Doc, who the heck was that? Calm down, Marty. I didn't disintegrate anything. The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future! One minute into the future, to be exact, and at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal. Look out! Uh, Doc? Huh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuit. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Notebook. Notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention! The thing that makes time travel possible! In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic! Let's see. It's mass equals I times Z, and E equals the square root of Z times C squared, and the flux dispersal rate is inversely proportional to the fourth root. Consequences could be catastrophic? Whoa. Deja vu. Uh, Doc? Scott! Doc, what is it? I've made a horrible mistake! Doc! No! I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc!
party? Is everything okay? Yeah, Mom, I... It was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap, I'm late. Are we too late to stop the... sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc stuff. The city has no right now, to... Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage, and... Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty! Hi, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... remembering. Hey, let me- Now, Biff, leave Marty alone. This is a very emotional time for him. Oh, sure. Sorry, Marty. I wonder why Doc didn't take any of these with him. Fish tank? I never knew Doc raised fish. Doc's fish had weird taste and decor. I kind of like Doc. Does nature contrive it so that even with a time machine, you can't intervene to prevent your own conception, for example? Jennifer'd like that. She's into old stuff. Doc built this model of downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff. Uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. You know, you and my folks go way back. Yeah, so? So how about letting me have that model courthouse for old time's sake? No, I think I'll keep it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me Browns to- Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. Ha! Ah!
Hey, Biff. I only want that notebook because, well, I'm, I'm sentimental. It's like a piece of Doc. Doc's dead! Time to get over it and move on! I'll pay you for it. How much? Um... Not enough! Ah, uh, never mind. Feels like that was a lifetime ago. Actually, I guess it was. Hey, let me try, Marty. Now, Biff, let Marty have his turn. You got it, Mr. McFly. Enough of that junk. Now, Biff. Sorry, Marty. Looks like a hand crank lightning rod, or maybe a lightning powered pencil sharpener. Hey, Dad. Who's running this sale anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly! I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know- Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. That notebook is Doc's legacy. I've got an obligation to protect it. Now, hold on a minute. Didn't you just get done telling me Doc's still around? Off traveling somewhere? Yeah. Then how is it your obligation to protect his legacy? You can't have it both ways, Marty. If Doc's alive, he can protect his own legacy. About Biff, Dad, I, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son. I'll stay out of your way. But you know where to find me. Problem? Biff? He's got this... thing, see? And I really need to get it back. If he stole something from you... No, it, it's one of Doc's notebooks. He found it first, but... Oh. Well, then I'm not sure what to tell you. I guess you'll just have to appeal to his better angels or something. Or something. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff. But I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Well, you know him better than I do, son. But the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. Let's make some noise. A 
It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. Hey, Dad, wh why's my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up, I'll iron things out with the bank. Here's an oldie, bloody goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> hey, look, it's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. Ah, Doc, where are you? Where do you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you? Okay, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. Retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I program the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now, or then, or uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, you come to my rescue in the past. Or was it the future? Anyway, I'm relying on you to do it again. Please, take the DeLorean back, or, or forward, to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Now, aren't you gonna tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading mark, Last Time Departed. Good luck. Right, right, Last Time Departed, Last Time Departed, uh... Oh, jeez. Come on, come on! Come on! Crap! Oh, great! How am I supposed to find him now? I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. Once I know when to look for Doc. Looks like the time circuits still work. Now I only need to know when to look for Doc.
What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? This time traveling shoe is my only clue to finding Doc. This notebook has all of Doc's plans for the flux capacitor and the DeLorean. I'd better make sure it never falls into the wrong hands. And by wrong hands, I mostly mean bit. I keep this picture of my dad to remind me that even the most hopeless losers can grow up to be pretty cool guys. What do you know about this shoe, Aini? Great Scott! I think he's onto something! Okay, now we're getting somewhere. How's this supposed to lead me to Doc, Einie? It's locked. Look at you. Einstein, come on! Just as I suspected. Hooligans! Get along now! Scat! Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. A shoe? Wow, now what would I want with a... Huh? <gasps> Stay there! Sorry, Einstein. Well, took you long enough. Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Hmm, much better. So neat and orderly. Nah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Uh, Have a seat, Sonny. Hey! You kids! Put out those cigarettes! Don't touch those! My newspapers are in pristine condition and meticulously organized. Not about to let some street punk get jam all over them. <laughs> Is that Vice Principal Strickland? Mother never could keep little Gerald out of her clothes. Man, she keeps it hot in here. That's the kettle. 
I'll be right back with some tea. And don't touch anything! Candy looks older than I am. Juveniles collide with manure truck. <laughs> nice picture. Hey, uh, mind if I use your binoculars for a sec? Go ahead, dear. Man, these are powerful. I could see Biff going into the video store. Yeah, you wouldn't believe the filth that boy watches. Yeah, he's nothing but an out-of-control hedonist, just like his father. If there's a clue to finding Doc out there, I'm not seeing it. I don't even know where to start looking. Uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing behind that tree! Yes? Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! Huh. Hi, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But... Oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh... Yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Oh, when was it? That speakeasy burned down. <laughs> a speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. Yeah, <laughs> Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch... No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. Student of history? My Aunt Fanny! Yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe things about history. Miss Strickland? Oh, video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. What's with all these newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue? From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. I guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously, the day after the speakeasy burned down. Doing some stargazing? No, oh, I set my sights on the lower things. Is that... Tim Tannen! Get away from that hubcap before I call your father! Don't let me keep you from your business. You there! Don't even think about tossing that Kleenex on the ground!
Miss Strickland lost that shoe the day the speakeasy burned down. But when was that? Would you mind if I stepped out for a minute? I, I just remembered a video I've got to return. Do you have to go? I get so few visitors these days. But- And I'd hate to have to tell my brother, your vice principal in charge of discipline, how rude you were to me. <laughs> Especially with graduation coming up and all. Uh, Miss Strickland, how about your tea? Uh, you forgot to turn on the- Ew! It's spelled with a U, you illiterate vandal! That tea's never gonna boil. There's the whistle! Surely the water's boiling by now! I guess I'm stuck here for a while. The polite guest stays out of the host's kitchen, Mr. McFly. Brown Mansion destroyed. 1962. No, no, that's not where Doc's stranded. Alright, Einstein brought me this shoe, and Miss Strickland lost the shoe on the day the speakeasy burned down. But when did the speakeasy burn down? I at least need to know the year. Firm announces plans for Lone Pine Mall, Peabody Ranch to be rezoned for commercial development. I don't even know where to start looking for clues in these stacks. Wish I could narrow it down to a year at least. Oh, that's peculiar. The water still hasn't come to a boil. There's the whistle! Surely the water's boiling by now. Hey, uh, mind if I use your binoculars for a sec? Go ahead, dear. Rebuilt in February 1932. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date. Don't look at me. I'm far too old for you. The whistle! Surely the water's boiling by now! Let's see. Ground broken on sight of former speakeasy, singer vanishes, Hill Valley Expo delights crowd, soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob... What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him! My newspapers! Sorry, Miss Strickland, uh, let me... No! You've gotten my history out of order! Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Oh, get out! Get out! Get out! Help! Police! I'm being attacked by hooligans! Marty! Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that game?
it's a costume. Uh, tonight's the big uh, Halloween party. Halloween party? In May? Never mind, you don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. You ready to go, Einstein? I've got to turn on the time circuits first. Time circuits? On. Flux capacitor? Uh, fluxy. Okay. If Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and get him out. I hope you know what you're doing, Doc. Einstein, where'd you go now, boy? Excuse me, young man! Who? Uh, me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. 
What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh... You can mark me down as a supporter, the young man said, flashing a boyish yet virile grin. Hill Valley needs more upstanding youths like yourself. Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets? No doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? Ask him where I can get the address. Ah, I see! Because you want to blast it to smithereens just like Carl Sagan did. With public-spirited citizens like you around, the lawless element will be on the run in no time. Mr. May I get your name? Yeah, it's... Michael Corleone. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Corleone. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no! Down, boy! Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before. What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up. Doc. I gotta find Doc. 